circumstance. A character in this one is a guy named Steve. He's outside his 20 year reunion. He's, you know, it's, it's started up or it's going to start in a few minutes and he's parked and he's, but he's kind of having second thoughts. So instead of going into the reunion first, this hall, um, kind of on a main drag, uh, he goes down the street, finds a bar and puts away a couple of shots first. Uh, his thing about the reunion, the 10 year, this is a 20 year reunion of his high school. The 10 year he strutted in there. And he was one of these guys kind of marched to his own drum, didn't have a normal job, kind of wheeled and dealed and, you know, all that stuff. And, and didn't settle down with any girlfriend, kind of, kind of played the field. And the tenure, it was effective because people would ask him what you're doing. And he could tell that um, they sort of envy him because they're getting locked into stuff. Uh, you know, marriages they're not sure about <laughs> and jobs, careers, all that stuff. And he's just, sort of roaming around, you know, kind of every day or every year is different and he's not. And so they actually admired him and envied him. He, he felt that anyway, at the 10, but now that the 20 is coming up, he feels kind of, uh, uh, it's somehow inferior to a lot of these people. Cause he, now he does not still have a career. He does not have a wife and a family and all that stuff going. But he, the main thing is he just, he doesn't have anything he can kind of brag about in life. And uh, so he just wants to maybe see a few people. He played football, maybe a few of the old football players say hello. But he wants to, and he also wants to see if there's any unattached women that, in his pain, in his view, haven't let themselves go too badly. That type of thing. Uh, he's kind of got a one-track mind, but he sees this one woman who he's had kind of this relationship with since high school. Um, you know. I, very, very briefly over the years, but they've, they've had a little thing going. Um, she sees her there with another guy who he just couldn't stand back. It was just a simple incident back in high school that he never got past. And the other guy never got past it. And they, they really never spoke. It's just one of these crazy grudges. And she's with this other guy. Uh, so he cuts in on the dance floor. He never done that before, but he cuts in on the guy and, and she sort of doesn't mind. She likes the fact that the two guys are, you know, vying for her affection or whatever. But I think she likes this guy, Steve, better than the other guy, actually, uh, even though she might not admit it. And so he talks her into leaving right then, just leaving the reunion, pretending she's, you know, going to the ladies' room or something, but just continuing out into the street where he's waiting for her. And, they, and it sort of goes from there. And the other guy doesn't like that. The other guy takes it, takes it personally. And, and, it, and it sort of goes, there's twists and turns in there. And then at one, as, as it goes on, he's not sure if the woman is being truthful to him as well. Uh, she said some stuff and he's acting on that. And then things turn out a little different. And, and so I just kind of have fun with it. I just, you know, one of those stories where you just, okay, what would happen next? What, you know, would this happen? Okay. This guy's going to turn around, turn it around on or whatever. No, no plan at all. No plot. Just, you know, one, you write one sentence, one paragraph. Okay. What would happen next here? And, and then it's just, you figure out a way to end it, and it just ends. And so that's Circumstance. Circumstance. Steve was having second thoughts about the reunion. So he stopped off first at a bar down the street from the thing and put away a couple of shots. The tenure had been different. He didn't have any career he could talk about, but people seemed to admire that, that here was a guy sampling the world, having adventures, while they were getting locked into shit. But the 20 year, you were going to get judged, and Steve hoped no one pressed him for details about himself. His main objective was to say to hello to a few of the football guys he could tolerate, and scan the room for unattached women who hadn't let themselves go too badly. The band had started up by the time Steve walked in, and they were going top-heavy 1995. Your TLCs, your Mariah Carey's, your boys to men. The lights were low, and it was hard to recognize a single person, and Steve kept checking name tags, which had everyone's high school yearbook photo Xeroxed on them in black and white. 
The open bar was on the other side of the dance floor, so he cut across it, bumping into a couple people who were dancing out of control. One guy gave him a look, but Steve ignored him and set himself up with a drink. And then, sitting at a corner table, holding court to seven or eight people, Kevin Mooney. You couldn't miss him. He had glasses now, some gray in the sideburns, an extra 15 pounds, but the same booming voice and laugh. Steve despised Mooney. There'd been an incident at practice one day and it never went away. Now you had three couples listening to him run his mouth and Steve recognized Mitch Waters and Jay Moore. There was another guy with a girl he could sort of place from trigonometry and then next to Mooney, Janine Getz. Steve tried to remember how many times he'd seen Janine since high school and he came up with three. Once at the zoo of all places when they were maybe 22, at the 10-year, where she dropped an on him that she'd been married and divorced, and a couple years later in line for garlic fries and a Giants game. Each time, one thing led to another, and they ended up hooking up for the night. For old time's sake was how Steve looked at it, and it was what it was. But right now, could she actually be with Mooney, or just sitting next to him? Steve worked his drink and waited for it to play out, and soon enough Mooney stopped talking and he and Janine got up and started dancing. They were smiling quite a bit and it was hard to tell if things were developing on the fly or if they'd come here together. Either way, they were sure nestled in close as the music slowed down. Steve had seen it in the movies a dozen times but had never done it until now, cutting in on Mooney tapping him on the shoulder, and when he turned, taking hold of Janine's lower back and pressing in toward her. Steve said, Good to see you, Kevin. You don't mind, do you? I do, as a matter of fact, Mooney said, but Steve angled Janine into the center of the herd, which hopefully was enough to deter the idiot. Steve said, Tell me I was imagining it. Janine said, Gosh, that's how you greet me? So what's up? He said. Well, it's good to see you too. You look good. Steve realized he did look okay after surveying the pretty motley competition. He hasn't he hadn't lost much hair. He worked out every day and he got a lot of sun. Cuz you you're involved with that guy, Steve said. That would seriously taint the old memories. Really, she said. Well, I guess I'm flattered because you never struck me as a sentimental type. I'm not, but once in a blue moon, when I'm having an exceptionally bad day, I might bring them out. So do I, if you must know, she said, and no, I'm not dating Kevin. Oh, yeah? Okay, all that happened, there was a party at Lynn Bacalow's last summer, in Orinda. Kevin showed up and said to stay in touch. And then what? A couple weeks ago, he called and said if he didn't have anything better to do, Come to the reunion with him? Sort of. He found me on Facebook. He lives in Arizona now. Steve said, Let's get out of here. Janine stopped dancing. You're still the same piece of work, aren't you, Stephen? What you do, he said, seeing as how your purse is hanging off the chair next to Kevin, tell him and his clan you'll be back in a minute. I'll be outside. Steve walked a half block down Sloat Boulevard, smoking a cigarette, and when he got back to the hall, Janine was standing out front with her coat on. Why do I do this, she said, shaking her head but smiling slightly. You're doing the right thing, Steve said. You have to admit that was pretty lame in there, a whole lot less energy than the tenth. Did you even say hello to anyone, she said. I did. Tommy Serrano on the way out. Good guy. Is that so? You play golf with him, right? Where'd you get that? I hear bits and pieces. Is he your only friend from back then? Come on, knock it off, Steve said, but he really couldn't think of anyone else. There had been the hot tub and a fire, and now they were in the master bedroom, holding each other in the dark, a little piano jazz playing soft. Janine said, 
That was nice. I don't want to say I needed it, but maybe I did. Well, your instincts have always been good, Steve said. Janine was rubbing his chest. So, I'll see you in another seven or eight years. Now, why do you have to tweak the mood with something like that, he said. I don't know. I guess I wouldn't mind it being a little more often. We've been down this road. Can we leave it alone for now? We can, she said. And after a few minutes, she grew restless and started working her way back up on top. Two weeks later, Steve was peeling off his wetsuit in the parking lot at Ocean Beach when he checked his phone and it was Janine wanting to see him, the tone of her message serious. Steve made the one dish he was confident about, gnocchi al pesto, which he learned from one of the kitchen guys when he worked briefly as a waiter in North Beach. He served it up with a loaf of sourdough and a couple large glasses of full-bodied red wine. Okay, take it easy, Steve said. Let's back up and go through it again. It's not complicated, Janine said. Kevin's been bothering me. I could feel that it could be nothing, but I'm also a little scared. Mooney had apparently figured out Janine had left the reunion with him. Steve wondered if the prick had followed them back to his place that night. Either way, it wasn't the ideal development, obviously, though he didn't want to convey any concern to Janine. Well, guys will do that sometimes, he said. Even clowns like Kevin, they're just marking their territory, letting you know they know. Hopefully, Janine said. Wait a second, I thought you said he lived in Arizona. That's it. He's been not only calling me, but ringing my bell. Not sure why he'd still be hanging around. Well, maybe he has business, or has taken some time visiting his folks and whatnot. But Steve didn't like this either, the out-of-state aspect definitely on the radar now. I don't know, Janine said. I'll be honest, Steve said. I'm a little surprised he would show that much interest. If all it was, you were meeting him at the reunion fresh. No other history in play. Janine didn't say anything, and Steve left it alone. Are you thinking there's a chance he might know you're here tonight? Steve said, tempted to turn off the lights and take a peek outside. Janine picked up her wine and came around the table and sat on Steve's lap and kissed him hard on the lips. Jesus, he said. What was that? It's nice here. I meant to ask you last time, how do you afford it? Steve had inherited a sum from his grandmother's sister who lived in Presidio Heights. He paid cash for a split-level ranch in the hills and back of Pacifica in 2006, got lucky with the timing of the market. The previous owner had converted the ground floor to a recording studio, and Steve reconfigured it into a two-bedroom apartment, which he currently rented for $2,300. Two roommates, Steve said. Excellent tenants. I shouldn't ask, Janine said, but females? They are. Steve knew where Janine was going, and admittedly he had connected with one of them, Kathy, when they first moved in, but that had resolved itself into a working landlord-tenant relationship. Anyhow, Janine said, my dad and brother, they're going to talk to Kevin. Wow, Steve said, trying to picture how that would go. Her dad, Mr. Getz, was an old longshoreman, a tough customer, and Jonah, the brother, was an easygoing guy but strong and either played football or wrestled somewhere in college if Steve had it right. He said, That actually might not be the worst thing, you know it? It should put you at ease. It doesn't, she said. I'm feeling it might escalate the problem. Well, that's not rational, Steve said. I know. Should I stay over? Geez. I mean, I'm thinking that could be the best remedy. Make this whole bad dream go away. Are you sure? No, I'm not sure, Steve said, but I'm going to pass. Four or five days went by and Steve didn't hear anything further and he didn't feel like contacting Janine to find out. He hated Facebook, but he went on it and searched around for Mooney and he supposed the way it was the same way Mooney had searched for Janine. It didn't take long to find the guy living in Gilbert, Arizona. Under status, it said, in a relationship. Steve couldn't find any contact info, 
but Mooney was apparently a builder down there and there was a website. He reluctantly sent the guy an email, not saying anything, just asking to give him a call. When he was online, he searched the local newspaper, the Foothills Focus. In the unlikely event, there was a report of a guy getting beat up in the area, but he couldn't find anything. Steve had the Thursday night football game on, alternating his view between that and the lower deck out the window to the right, where his tenants, Kathy and Lorraine, were in the hot tub in their bikinis. The phone rang and it was Mooney. You're the last guy I would have expected to be leaving a message, Kevin said. What do you need? Well, I appreciate you getting back, Steve said, but I don't need anything. You okay? The fuck you mean by that? Steve wanted to get on a plane and go down there and beat the shit out of the guy himself if Janine's dad and brother hadn't. He said, It says you're in a relationship. So why the BS with Janine? None of your business there, pal. Other than I come up and bang her when I feel like it, and she comes down and sees me when she feels like it. We good now? Steve felt like he'd been slapped on the side of the head. He tried to keep his composure and come up with another question. <clears throat> How's she doing? Was all he could think of. She's fine. She's in the pool, actually. Anything else? Janine's brother Jonah lived in Berkeley on the south side of campus. Steve had now found him on Facebook as well and saw that he was back in school getting a Ph.D. in environmental science. The address was in the online white pages. Jonah let him in. He said, Bud, another circumstance I'd offer you some coffee, but I have to tell you, you got some real balls showing up here. Steve said, I do? Okay, dude, now you're playing with me. Don't insult me. Steve liked the kid the few times he met him. He remembered him taking prom pictures of the two of them on the little front lawn of the house on Clay Street. He said, I'm sorry, Jonah, but I'm just not following you. My sister, Jonah said, I'm not about to let her take crap from anyone. What's your fucking problem? Outrageous as it seemed, Steve was slowly but surely putting it together. So you and your dad, he said, you were going to rough me up. We still are, Jonah said. Steve took a moment. Janine, he said, does she have any recurring issues at all that you know of? You'd best be watching your step there, pal. Medications, maybe, that type of thing? I mean it. You got about a quarter second to shut the fuck up. Okay, now, Jonah, listen to me. I can tell you have a good heart, but you've got it all wrong. I recorded Janine saying something you need to hear. My phone's in the car. I'll be right back. Steve opened the trunk and took out a black zippered bag. His friend Serrano was a Daily City cop, 17 years on the job, not that far off from retiring which was hard to believe. A few years back, Steve had gotten into it with another driver, and he told Serrano about it, and Serrano gave him a taser. Steve went back inside, unzipped the bag, and shot Jonah in the chest with it. That night, Kathy and Lorraine were in the hot tub again. Steve invited them for an impromptu dinner. He told them no need to change, that a nice fire would do the trick. When they were sitting around after dessert and Steve had brought out the liqueur, Kathy said, You're kind of a weird landlord. Anyone ever tell you that? All the time, Steve said. <laughs>